This is Sims, and we are back with more Variable Barricade. Continuing Tiger's route, where we left off in the middle of a chapter! Usually we start in the beginning of the little chapter things, but this time we're in the middle. So we're in his little flashback about Gramps. Well, we saw his flashback. I don't know if we're flashback to the orphanage and about having conversations with Gramps, and now we're at our butt. So, but, anyway, but, on that day, I never imagined I'd get a chance to pay back part of my debt so soon. Now this is weird. I visited him not that long ago. Why is he calling me back again so soon? <clears throat> Curious, I passed through the big Tojo estate gate. Yo, Gramps, what's cooking? I have a request for you. The solemn look on Gramps' face threw me for a loop. I sat down across from him and collected my thoughts. Something happened. A request for a marriage interview with Spacey's arrived, and I absolutely can't refuse it outright. But I want to intercept and nullify it. Whoa, whoa, back up a sec. A sec. Intercept? Nullify? Is this guy some kind of nasty character? It's Ichia. <laughs> I would laugh my ass off. No, oh, actually, in fact, when you look at the surface conditions of the interview, he's a perfect candidate. Then... I have several reasons, though... Mostly it's because I don't like this arrangement. Gramps bit off the last word with a frown. Sure, that couldn't possibly be the only reason for his irritation, but knowing how much he doted over his grandkid, I totally see how it was a big one. He does adore to pieces. It's so funny because he doesn't act like he does to us. But also, I think even if he tries, we get all angry, but it's just because, like, what we thought our perceptions as a child but like you know what i mean and like what we our perceptions as a child and what we needed as a child we didn't get because he was a different type of grandpa like i have to be the head of the tojo family and strict and whatever like that so he's tried to kind of like i don't think he really knew how to be a grandpa doesn't mean he doesn't love us, but he just didn't know how to be like, you think like, everybody's great. Oh my God. Think of like the best type of grandpa in your imagination. He was not that guy. Doesn't mean he doesn't love us, but like he definitely didn't know how to show it and everything. And then I think as we got older, we got pricklier and whatever. And it just became like this animosity thing. And it's like, we weren't willing to realize that like, okay, he did love you in his own way. He just didn't know how to absolutely act around kids. And the fact that, Instead of being like, everybody's grandpa's got a Werther's original in his fucking pocket, and he's gonna, like, take you down to the store to buy candy or whatever, is like, just like, no, follow the rules! You know what I mean? It's a different world, you know? But it is still kind of funny, because I don't think... <laughs> I think you could have learned how to handle it better, Gramps, all I'm saying. But I, I, but I think between the two of us, we're both just, like, stubborn as fuck and never gonna, like, you know? A little bit him, a little bit us. Nobody's perfect here, but... I sighed. Gramps' stern expression didn't even twitch. I have a plan that'll let us dodge the interview. I'll choose my own suitors for Spacey. She'll live with them and ultimately pick one of them for herself. Live together? Hold on, isn't she your grand- Isn't your granddaughter still in high school? That ain't gonna fly. Right. I'll need a chaperone to keep an eye on things. I guess like, ah. Oh. Ahem! I said, I'll need a chaperone! <laughs> I love Grandpa. I heard you the first time. You don't have to repeat yourself. Basically, you want me to do it, right? I sighed when he nodded. Well, it mean, is a chance to pay him back. Alright, I'll do it. I didn't even pause. You will? Excellent! How nice of you to volunteer! <laughs> All untold. Ah, stuff it. <laughs> Tiger's tongue out. No, oh, the stern solemnity vanished in a flash, and his face lit up with a satisfied smile. I'll give you the details later. Here's the gist. The other suitors include a fraudster, a mooch, and a debtor. What? They've got their quirks, but they're all interesting men. I had selected them for good reasons. Bramp smirked as he looked directly at me. His eyes sparkled with a wordless but obvious challenge. He's voicing some problem kids on me, eh? Except for one of them is fucking Ichio, who's almost 30. <laughs> problem kids who's older than you! <sighs> he was 
gonna dump this rabble in his precious granddaughter's lap? Yeah, something was definitely up. Yeah, he wants us to realize how much we love Kasuga and that Kasuga's the perfect husband. <gasps> Known this since the second he rolled up into my room and I first saw him, okay? Whole game, just to get to what I already knew. Like, split second I saw Kasuga's face. Right? Perfect. The whole circus was starting to wreak of trouble, but it was a personal request directly from Gramps. All right, I said I'll do it so you can count me into do it, you can't count on me to do it right, but on one condition, no secrets. Of course, it'd be a difficult job for you otherwise. You, Tiger, will officially be my granddaughter's fourth suitor. Play the part well. What? Seriously? That's so not my style. Don't be like that. This is a rare opportunity. You get to meet my charmless brat of a granddaughter and knock her pride down by a peg or three. <laughs> ah! Grandpa's such a dick, but he's a great one. I love him so much. I mean, charmless brat. I mean, whose fault is it that I'm a charmless brat? I'm just saying, like... Although you'd think, like, teaching me how to be charming and cordial and all those things... But I guess we took all the classes, but we never actually got to develop a normal sense of self. So, of course, we don't have charm that normal people... Like, normal people who are... There's the charming people who are just... Who taught themselves, and they're charming based on... And you're like, you're so fucking fake. And then there's people that are like, they're charming in a witty, weird way that are just unique to themselves. Like... And it's a natural kind of thing, you know? And everybody's got some level. A little bit of charm, a lot of charm. Like, we are, we've are we got the good fake. I can put on a fake smile and be at a tea party. Would you like... Oh, <laughs> yes, that is a witty antidote. <laughs> You're so funny, Mr. Great. Okay. You know, but after we take off that facade, we charmless because we never got to develop a sense of self enough to kind of figure out that personality and, like, grow into it, you know? So, and our pride. Yeah, because also we're fighting with a girl. Like, yeah, I just, I'm just saying, we grew up to be the person we are mostly because of you, Grandpa. So, like, I don't really know if you should be, like, judging me for this shit, but still funny. You don't need to hold back. I gave you my permission to do your best work. You're good at humbling the prideful, no? Come on, you're making me sound like a slime ball. Besides, I've never hung out with well bred ladies. Huh! Well-bred lady, my foot! She's a snotty teenager, nothing more. No need to stand on ceremony around her. Think of it as teaching a naive, sheltered princess the harsh ways of the real world. Do whatever you feel you must. I'm sure this experience will be the medicine she needs. I mean, he's kind of not wrong, but again, because I was never allowed to just be a normal fucking person, that's why I grew up to be, like, basically a puppet. Person, uh, like a, you know, they almost have no personality aside from being angsty because, like, I never got the chance to be like a normal child. So that's why sometimes when you see rich people, you're like, why are rich people so fucking weird, right? Because they didn't get a chance to be normal. You didn't have normal thing. You can't do that. That's what normies do. You can't do it. You're rich. So it's like they all grow up to be fucking crazy. You're like, they are like fucking puppet people. What is this shit? What is wrong with rich people? Right? Because they didn't get to be normal. Like the rest of us. You know? You just do normal things. Like, you understand that cake in a box, you have to mix ingredients in and bake it. It doesn't just pour out of the box. Like, pretty sure the antidote for that is that my cousin dated a guy who was so fucking rich he didn't actually understand how to make cakes because never cooked a cake before because you know they always had servants to do it so like they were cooking cake one time and he had no fucking idea that like you don't just open a box and the cake magically pops out that you had to actually like mix ingredients and do all that because rich people are fucking stupid <laughs> like you may be really good at making money but you couldn't survive if you lived like a normal person, because you would just not comprehend anything, because you just don't get the normal world where a majority of us live. <laughs> like, So it makes sense that we're an idiot, and we don't understand shit, and we're like a puppet person, 
Because we were never allowed to not be a puppet person. And now our grandfather's like, knock some sense into her! Um, hello! Could have done that my whole life. Let me have, like, a normal childhood, maybe. Not, like, beat into me that I am the Tojo heir and you will act like the Tojo heir! You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Whose fault is this? Mostly yours. I'm just saying. We are a bratty teenager, though. Absolutely, I'll give you that, but... All teenagers are bratty teenagers. Rarely a teenager where you're like, you're actually a good teenager. You're like, you're all brats. All kids are brats. We all go through that phase. Anyway. But some of us grow up and we're still assholes. Hey. Hi. <sighs> Call myself out anyway. Get him with a mischievous smirk. Ugh. This is what Gramps we were talking about after all. Even though I told him to spill everything, there'd still be something he'd conveniently forget to mention. Of course, I'd agree to take the job despite being aware of his w wily ways, so I couldn't really complain. Dagger? Hmm? I'm sending you over there as an observer. However, should you somehow develop romantic feelings for her, it wouldn't bother me a smidge. Huh? Be a man, Tiger. Should the day come when you're truly named my grandson, I swear that I'll welcome you to my family. After pointing at you and laughing. <laughs> I love Grandpa so much. Such a fucking asshole, but he's like the best. Uh, yeah. And that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> the best part, he's like, yeah, no, not gonna happen. No, he's like, oh. I was so confident about it back then, too. And yeah, he really was a stupid, stubborn, snotty teenager who was way too serious about life. Again, it's been drilled into us to always be perfect. Tojo Air. <laughs> but you know... I have to admit, her attitude is kind of... cute. No matter how many times I told myself to reconsider, my gut reaction was always the same. It's cute as hell. So yeah, that's where I was. There's no way Gramps set this up without knowing this exact scenario was gonna happen. Knowing him, it was likely. There's a reason he was the head of the Tojo family. When that was the case, that meant he'd been... Oh, he'd been playing me like a damn fiddle this whole time. Ah, hell with it. Forget the past. Right now, it was Babe I had to worry about. Having sorted out and come to terms with my feelings, the next thing I had to do was... get a read on things. How does she really feel? And how determined am I to make this happen? There was no telling where the chips would fall yet. It was almost like I was making a bet with fate, and... Fortunately, I could never resist playing the odds. Ugh. Just gonna have to do this, aren't I? Sorry, Babe. But given how everything turned out, I might be done with this whole observer business. <laughs> I'M JUST GONNA HAVE TO DO THIS, AREN'T I? The choice of words there. <laughs> Took a deep breath. Made my decision. Okay, time to take action. Officially throwing in my hand. No, I'm shorter than I thought it would be. I mean, we split it between the two, but like, between the two, I didn't... Tyga joins the fray! Extremely conscious of what Tyga is like, I can't help but avoid him. He, however, has other ideas. I would absolutely assume this is the next one, just because. <sighs> the beautiful blue sky sprawled forever outside my window. I'm very surprised that when the birdies chirped, my birdie did not chirp back at them. Instead, he's smacking my headset. Can't chew on it. Sit in his little claws. Digging into my neck. Dagger toe. I love you, but you dagger toe. Sharp. None of his little perches do anything. You jerk with your sharp toes. You should let me trim them, but I thought he wouldn't. I know. I know you wouldn't let me because you're traumatized. Because the one time I accidentally cut down to the quick a little too, I cut it and you were bleeding and I was like, ah! And I was chasing you around the house because you were flying because you were scared and I hurt you and I was like, ah, ah, ah! like what they tell you not to do after the fact. It's like if you're cutting your bird's nails and you cut and they bleed, don't panic because if you're panicking, it makes them panic and then their heart rate and then they bleed more. Like, <sighs> yeah, that was fun. Where I know. I know! Oh my god, you poor thing. You already didn't like the fact that I was holding you trying to cut your nails, and then I cut too much, which I'm sure hurt, and then like, you know. Oh my god. 
And then I like, ah, chasing him around, stop firing, yelling, I throw him in the cage. And he's like, ah, and I'm like, ah, I didn't mean to yell, I just have blood everywhere. It was traumatic. And then the time we took him to get his toenails trimmed at the birdie doctor, and they wrapped him up like a birdie burrito so he wouldn't flap and hurt himself. You know what I mean? And then they used a file to, like, file his nail, and he was screaming like they were murdering him. And on one hand, I felt so awful. I was like, oh, my poor bird, he's so scared. And on the other hand, I was laughing because he just looked fucking ridiculous, wrapped him in a little birdie burrito, and he was screaming like a drama queen. They weren't hurting him. <laughs> And then the doctor man was like, oh, all these fanciful perches and all the different, the different types are good for their feet anyway. But then it's like, oh, you'll never have to trim his nails again. Liar. His nails are so motherfucking sharp. So sharp. But he won't let me trim them. And like, I'm too lazy to take him back to get him like filed down. So I just deal with the dagger toes. Right. Uh, anyway, the beautiful blue skies sprawled forever outside my window. Plus, we know how he dealt the other day. Was it? I was in the middle of this game. Yeah. Having a freaking piece of hair struck around his leg. Me trying to hold him to get the hair off his leg. And he was, ah! Like, yeah, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do well with me trying to hold him to get, like, clippers to clip his toenails. It's not gonna work. You need, like, six people and, like, falconing mitts, okay? Anyway. A beautiful blue sky scrawled out forever. That's how I went and run over. I couldn't bring myself to bask in the lovely morning weather. I didn't get a wink of sleep. I adjusted the ribbon on my uniform and sighed yet again. That's how I felt this morning. Like, I went to bed and I laid awake for, like, a little too long. Even if it was, like, 20, 30 minutes, and then my alarm went off, and I was like, I don't want to get up, I just want to sleep. It was just bad. My emotions were a complete shambles, and it wasn't hard to guess why. This is all Tyga's fault. He just had to go prattle on, didn't he? Oh, we can that CG again? No, oh, okay. I told myself over and over that I had a specific job to fill, but eventually my pep talks just stopped working. I couldn't keep lying to myself. Oh, there it is! That was totally cool with your attitude from the start, you know? I like spicy women. I like spicy chicken sandwiches. I like spicy food. And then you learned I was just an observer, and suddenly you started messing around with me a lot more, right? It's pretty cute if I'm being honest. Like spicy food. The other three had courted me in a myriad of ways, but Tyga's words had blown them all out of the water. Of all the many compliments I've been given in my life, they were the first that had resonated with me so deeply. Suka's over in the corner, like, Excuse me! I tell you all the time that you're an asshole! What the fuck? Tyga's. Tyga. Kasuga's way of courting it. Did I say Tyga's in the corner? Did I say Kasuga's? I don't know. My brain isn't broken. Right? Very hungry. <sighs> And we're only 20 minutes in, and I'm like, I'm hungry. My head hurts. It'd come from Tyga, who was bluntly honest about everything. That made them ring all the more true. Ugh! When I think about it, my head starts to... My heart starts to race again. I can't... I pressed my palms against my flaming cheeks, but I couldn't stop my thoughts from tumbling on. And does that mean what I think it means? That, um... Tyga like does really... Uh... Huh? Me? Ugh! But, but, but if I let Tyga finish his thought. I seriously thought of you as a younger sister at first, but then. I would have let all his true feelings come forth. My face was hot, burning. That's how I feel every time Kasuga shows up. I glanced up at the mirror and sure enough, my cheeks were cherry red. Ugh! Enough of this! I have to pull myself together! Miss Spicy, if you don't eat breakfast soon, we may find ourselves unpleasantly short on time. See? I'm all blushing and like, oh my god, I can't... And then the perfect man just shows up knocking at my door. Thank all right, I'll be there in a moment! Very good, miss. I will ensure the car is ready for your departure. I listened to his footsteps fade away down the hall before I took a deep breath. Gave myself a bracing smack on my cheeks to calm down. Ow. I be more careful. I can't let anyone see the goofy look that was just on my face. Let alone him. I already knew he was probably gearing up to tease me even more mercilessly than before. I wouldn't give him that satisfaction, and I certainly would not let him take control of the situation. Okay. 
perfect picture of tranquility once more, I picked up my school bag and left my room. <sighs> hey, Spacey! Good morning! Good morning, my sweet. You look lovely as per usual. If you could wait just a moment, I'll bring you an omelette. I said thank you to Ichia and casually glanced around the dining room. I didn't see him anywhere. Um, where's Taiga? Taiga? I bet she's still in bed. He really likes to sleep in lots, doesn't he? I can't blame him. Oh. Do I detect a hint of disappointment in your voice? Huh? What are you talking about? I'm not d disappointed at all. Why would I be? I'm sorry for the delay, Spacey. Here, why don't you have a seat? Uh, oh, thank you. Time to dig in! This is so yummy! You're only getting seconds and thirds today, Nayuta. Aw, I won't even fill my belly halfway. Is there anything else? I'm totally okay with having more than just an omelet. You're only getting seconds and thirds. I was not put on this earth for the sole purpose of cooking for you all day long. Control yourself! Without Tiger around, everyone was acting like their usual selves. I felt my nervousness slowly start to drift away. Yes, this ought to be fine. I can keep my composure around the three of them. I finally let myself relax enough to pick up my silverware and start digging into my breakfast. You knew this was going to be a... But right then, you're like, I can finally relax. Not going to last for long. Okay. Morning. Oh, of course he showed up the second I thought I was safe. Told you. You knew that was happening, right? Hmm. Wrong, babe. N nothing. Nothing at all. Why would anything be wrong? I realized I'd almost gotten out of my seat. I hurriedly sat back down and fixed my posture. Stay calm. Breathe. If I show any sense of weakness, tease me in front of everyone. There, see, Ichia? Speezy was about to get up for seconds, too. Even she thinks your portion sizes are lame. I somehow doubt that was why she was what she was doing, Nayuta. Still, she is acting somewhat odd this morning. Is something the matter? I'm just late. No, nothing's the matter. Leave me be. Uh-huh. What? Hmm? Nothing. Just thinking you're looking cute this morning. That's all. Got that snarky fucking look on his face. What? Shocked at Tyga's bold remarks, my hands jerked and my breakfast place accidentally flipped upside down. Go away, spam callers. Yeah, Speezy, are you okay? Oh my god, you didn't spill any on your uniform, did you? Here, get up, I'll wipe the table. I'll wipe the table, sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Fortunately, I'd finished most of my meal, so the leftovers didn't go far. My uniform was safe. Oops. You okay, babe? Don't act so surprised. This was all your fault. I shot him a glare, but he had the gall to just shrug and smile back. Sorry, I didn't know you are suddenly so keenly aware of my comings and goings. I I'm not. I was barely even paying attention to you. Don't just make things up. Easy. Your cheeks are quite pink. I'm just embarrassed about spilling my food. I ducked away, discreetly hiding my treacherous flesh. Flush. Not flesh. Flush. I grabbed my bag and got up to leave. Ichia, Nayuta, I'm sorry you had to clean up my mess. But anyway, I really have to get going. Thank you for breakfast. See you this afternoon. I wonder what's gotten into her. I don't know. I guess over there like... Ugh, so pathetic. This was bad. Really bad. I needed to regain my composure in a hurry. I'm not paying attention to Taiga. I do not think about Taiga constantly. I'm not aware of his every move at all. I repeated the mantra to myself as I walked out the door. So. School offered an all too brief refuge before I was forced to return to the den of danger. I'm home. Yo, welcome back. Why is he the first person I run and do? My eyes quickly moved away from his, as if on reflex. He was the king of bad timing. Hey, good news. Each you just finished baking a cake. Say we all sit down, have a snack, and shoot the breeze. No, thank you. I'm on a diet. Uh, hey. Cool. 
great. I ran away. Again, I'm sorry, I'm tired. At this rate, he'll think I'm avoiding him. To be honest, he'd be right. I secured myself in my room, my thoughts racing around in circles. Dinner time arrived all too quickly. Dinner time is like 40 minutes. 35. <laughs> Throughout the meal, I made certain to avoid eye contact with Taiga so I could keep a grip on my composure. I'm sure it was blatantly clear that I was not acting like myself, but for some reason, nobody said a thing. While a part of me was glad they didn't bring it up, I still felt guilty enough to retreat back into my room. <laughs> what do I do now? The more I try to act normal, the more awkward things get. And not just around Taiga, either. I was making life weird between myself and the others, too. The situation was bad. Terrible. Disastrous! What can I do? A wisp message. Expecting it to be Samugi, I picked up my phone and swiped it open. There, on the screen... Half an hour. My room. Wait, do you want me to come now? I said half an hour. I'm waiting. I had to realize that things couldn't stay this way. That's why he'd given me this opportunity to talk. I... should go, shouldn't I? I thought hard for a few minutes, then made up my mind. I'll be there. Um, pardon my intrusion. Half an hour later, right at the appointed time, I walked into Tyga's room. Despite being half frozen with nervousness, I'd managed to stagger to his room. Somehow. Come on, what's with a sudden formality? You used to barge right in like you own the place. I mean, technically I do. I did? That's in the past. I got grimace when he saw how nervous I was. Uh, well, have a seat wherever, I guess. Want something to drink? I got bottles of tea buried around her somewhere. Y yes, please. I took the bottle of tea he handed to me and carefully sat myself on the edge of his bed. You said you were waiting for me, so um, here I am. The bottle of tea was starting to sweat a bit. I kept it unopened and cradled its cool surface between my warm, clammy hands. Yeah, uh, so... It's not like I asked you over just so we can chat about the weather or whatever. So, let's have it. Is there something you want to tell me? Me? Oh, I do want to explain that I'm not trying to avoid him on purpose. I've just been so rattled that I needed space. If I say that, he'll definitely ask me to explain what has me so rattled. I, I can't tell him that! I can't just tell him that I've become painfully cognizant of his movements because I think I might like him. You said all that aloud. I don't have an inner monologue! It'd be funny as fuck. Huh, babe? Could you please stop pulling all those weird faces? I know things are serious right now, but you're gonna make me die laughing if you keep it up. She's over there. Man, you really do wear your emotions all over your face. Well, after saying all that, I guess I just made you all the more sensitive about your expressions, eh? Especially since you don't get much feedback on the issue. Well, yes! You're absolutely right, thank you! How could you think I wouldn't be sensitive after- I- I'm not sensitive. Whatever, don't worry about it. You don't have to say anything. He saw right through me. Not that I was surprised. Even a three-year-old could call out my obvious shift in behavior. Sorry I've been avoiding you. I didn't know what to do. I felt so awkward, so embarrassing. I just couldn't- Okay, it's okay. I promise I get it. To be honest, my life's been on a slippery slide to awkward land, too. Probably time to hash some stuff out between us and make things crystal clear. Oh? Leaving too many questions between us just doesn't feel right, you know? So let me say this. This is- Oh my god. This conversation, could you imagine if you were like, Oh my god, kind of flirty in here. And these are new. Alright, let's hash things out and make things crystal clear. And you're like, This is where they're like, I understand you're attracted to me, but I'm not into you like that. And they make you feel like an asshole. And you're like, oh, you know what I mean? You're waiting for that final blow, like that knockout punch, the verbal knockout punch. He's going to be like, I'm totally into you and you're into me and it's cool. Like, it's not going to be that way. Like, with type, but like, you're like, oh, oh, oh. All the painful conversations you've ever had in your life that kind of sort of started like this are just like flashing back in your head and you're like, uh. <laughs> if you need to take a moment, pause the video, 
turn it off, come back later, I'll still be here, and just go cry in a corner, because that's what I feel like doing. <laughs> that is like... You're like, we need to sit down, we need to talk. Oh, God! Or when my dad used to call, because my dad never called any of us, right? So, I <laughs> remember one day, like, my dad never called. Your, my mom would call about stuff, whatever. So my dad, one day, like, I this is back before caller ID. I mean, people had caller ID, but I didn't have it on my phone, okay? Because, like, it wasn't really, like, your cell phones were, like, flip phones, okay? Like, if that, all right? It was back before smartphones, before, like, you would have caller ID, like, hooked into your phone. Like, that was like, a, ooh, your caller ID, you're special, right? Okay, back in ye oldie times, okay? Basically, like, baby internet days, okay? I feel so fucking old, okay? It was like the early 2000s. Like, 20 fucking years ago. Okay, back in the 20 years ago. Back in my day. <laughs> my dad calls once and I just pick up the phone. I don't know who it is, right? Hello? It's your father. Are you sitting down? Oh my god, what happened? Who died? Because my dad never called. And the first thing he fucking asks is, Are you sitting down? Well, you know shit's gonna hit the fan. You're like, well, what happened? Are you sitting down? Yeah, what happened? Your mother fell and broke her ankle. Jesus fucking Christ, Dad. I thought Mom was dead. What the fuck? You know? <laughs> I think he did it on purpose because he wanted to fuck with all of us. But, um, you know, it was just kind of funny. But it's like those conversations. Are you we sit down. We need to talk. Okay, so let's just hash this out. Are we breaking up and I didn't know we were dating? You're about to tell me that you know I'm in love with you, you don't have those same feelings, and I need to back off and I'm creepy and weird or some shit? And you're like, and all I did was, like, say hi to you. What? Like, <laughs> why don't talk to people? It feels like that. It's, you're like, every awkward encounter you ever had with anyone in your life, ever, is this moment right now, and you're like, oh, oh, it hurts. So you need to take a moment to go cry. Please do. Okay. Are you back? Did you have a good cry? Did you let all that out? Okay. Because it's not going to be like that with Tyga. You know, he's going to be like, totally into you. <gasps> what? It's going to be a beautiful moment, but we needed to work out the sadness of the traumatic moments in our lives. So I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you had a nice cry. You feel good? Okay, good. We all feel good? All right. But wait, you aren't. I think you're cute as hell, babe. And yeah, I do regard you as a woman, not a kid. See? Told you it was going to be nice. You're like, <gasps> Wait, it's a pleasant shock. The bluntness of his words caused my cheeks to flare like stoked coals. I could feel the heat blaze all the way to my ears. I was sure I surpassed mere blushing. Maybe glowing like an ember was more appropriate. But as you know, I'm only here as an observer. Put simply, it's not good to get emotions mixed in with business. It makes a mess. And that was the letdown. So, Tyga paused for a moment and let a mischievous smirk slide past his lips. I'm temporarily giving him my post. What? All that time I spent babysitting the other three, I'd rather spend it winning you. Spend it winning. I'd rather spend it winning you over, babe. I don't know why I couldn't read that. Huh? W wait a minute. I want to take you out on dates, real dates. Not like when you drag me out to get away from the others. I want to spend all the time with you, all the time I can with you. Um. Tyga? Man. You just like bamboozled! I mean, you knew. You're like, he's gonna be like, I'm really in. I don't think of you as a kid. I think of you like a woman. You're super fucking hot. But my job here is not to get involved. <gasps> oh. So fuck my job. <gasps> I mean, the roller coaster! Tyga. Son of a bitch, you knew what you were doing. We get closer and closer. For too long, I'll make you see how damn fine I am. You kind of already know you're damn fine, though. Thing. And so far, you have the personality I didn't expect you to have. I mean, he's still feisty. Still a feisty, snarky bastard. But, like, in a, it's just, like, the most wholesome, wonderful way ever. You're like, you little ass. I mean, you're soft and squishy. I mean, but I like it. Hold on. And if Lady Luck's on my side and you get serious about me, well... Tyga smirk became solemn, and every chase of mischief vanished from his face. I looked back in nervous silence, swallowing hard. We'll gather up our courage and apologize to Gramps together. That's the best you can offer? The corner of my mind must have expected more excitement because I automatically snapped at his limp response. Hey, that's important, isn't it? You have much more important things to worry about before you even think about getting that far. Like your feelings? I 
Exactly. Like my... Ha! <laughs> when I tell you, babe, you drop all your defenses and get way more honest about stuff when you're ticked. Ugh! Now is not the time to be fooling around! Not dead serious here. I want you bad enough. I'm willing to ditch the job that was entrusted to me. I know I'm asking for the impossible here, but I'm not going to lie to myself. For ages, I thought about the best way to handle the situation, and this is what I came up with. It's so unfair how he's able to be so level-headed at times like this. I couldn't think of how to respond when he was like that. All I could do was sit there in awkward silence, my cheeks still burning in embarrassment. You felt comfortable around me because I was the observer, not a suitor like the others. I wasn't trying to hit on you, so you regarded me as a safe island. Could be that what, that what I said before has caused you to start regarding me in another light. But it's also possible that you were just knocked for a loop when a guy you thought of as a big bro suddenly started hitting on you. I, I... I wanted to say no. But I hadn't accepted the turbulent emotions in my heart. At least not to a definitive degree. You haven't really built up any defenses against that kind of stuff, babe. It's gonna take time to toughen up. Are you trying to insult me? Nope. Just trying to protect you. What's that supposed to mean? Everything he said had deliberate purpose and was pointing towards one very clear meaning. It was like every word was chosen to make my heart skip. I didn't pretend to sulk. I had no idea how else I was supposed to keep myself composed. But Tyga doubtlessly saw through my act, same as he thought, saw through everything else. So yeah, that's how it is. If I was to yell, marry me, I love you at this point, I'd probably just confuse you. Probably terrify, actually. Well, but do you love me and want to marry me? Besides, I'm just sorting all this out for myself, too. I'm not really in a position where I can say if I'm ready to go all the way here, either. What? I couldn't help but exclaim automatically at his words. No point in putting on a show in this kind of situation. That'd just lead to trouble. That's why I made that suggestion earlier. It's partly for my sake, too. You and me, we gotta hit the reset button on this. We gotta take our relationship back to square one. We'll start over as grown-ups, just a dude and a lady. Then get an idea how serious we want to get. When Taika was being honest, he was an expert at laying everything out there. I suspect he was being forward to soothe any fears I had and to remind me I had to think seriously on all this. It is true, I'm starting to find myself slightly attracted to some of his quirks. Are my feelings the same as his? Can I say that I really regard him in the same light he sees me under? I had the feeling that if I spoke honestly about how I felt, something between us might change. Change was frightening, to say the least. If you say that hooking up with me is totally out of the question and you'll never see him as a suitor, that's fine. I'll give up and go back to watching over the other apes. But if you feel something for me, even a smidgen of something, let's say we try my plan. If you give it a go and find out it's just not going to happen, I won't complain. Your life is your life, and I can accept that no problem. Well? One corner of my mind wondered if Tyga's plan might be a little too good to be true. But maybe that was just his way of being kind. Okay. I couldn't pretend I didn't understand him. Not after that. Besides, I wanted a chance to evaluate my feelings and figure out their true nature, too. Still not sure what to do, but I will give all this some serious thought. Really? Great. Thanks, babe. I got visibly relaxed, his shoulders lifting like he'd just put down a heavy weight. Well, it's all out there now, huh? No turning back. Oh, and just so you know, totally serious about this. I'm gonna romance the hell out of you, so you better prepare yourself. <laughs> You're gonna fall for me. Hard. Like ass over tea kettle. I bet we will, though. What over tea kettle? If you think I'm in your face now, get ready. You'll be head over heels for me before you know it. Head over heels? Okay, listen, I'm head over heels for Kasuga, but I will fall in love with you just because, you know. In fact, you'll get to the point where you won't pretend to act prickly around me anymore. Not to say that isn't cute. C cute? Don't say that! Damn right I'm gonna say that. In fact, I'm gonna say that and a whole lot more, starting now. Because now I'm flirting for keeps. I was mad. Completely furious at myself. Why? Because a teeny part of me was looking forward to the shenanigans Tyga had up his sleeve. Well, there's no telling how things will go, so don't get your hopes up. I tried to cool my anticipation for his courtship by bluffing, but Tyga just laughed. 
Hell, if it ain't worth taking a sh Hell, if it ain't worth taking that shot, though. I promise you, I'm gonna show you the time of your life. What am I supposed to do now? I don't think I can outmaneuver him. I was not gonna fall for any of them. I've been adamant when I vowed to remain chilly at the start, but now my determination was teetering. What was gonna happen to me? Taiga was clearly happy with how his chips had landed. I shot him an annoyed glance. Glare, sorry, glare. Do you ever get any weird creepy deja, deja vu feelings? Do you ever get that creepy deja vu feeling? Oh, there's a lot of these. Okay. Like, as I was reading that for some reason, something in my brain just started thinking of, like, another game. But, like, because I was reading that, it was, like, half in the back of my mind. You ever, those moments where you're, like, doing something and something flashes in your brain and you're, like, that's very familiar and I know exactly what it is, but you can't grab it fast. Like a dream. <laughs> it's been happening to me the last couple of days. I think I'm having a fucking brain seizure. Like, seriously, I swear to God, like, something is wrong in my synapses. I don't know. But it's happened to me at work, and it just happened now. I was totally, like, there was some other, like, game or a show or something, and I saw it clearly, like, I knew exactly what it was, but all of a sudden, my I'm like, I can't think of what I just popped into my head and circled around. You know, like, when you have a dream... And it's clear as day, and then you wake up, and it's, like, there, but then as you try to recall it, it just, like, flies the fuck away, and you're like, there was, like, I had a dream where there was, like, stuff happening, and, like, you know, but, like, you can't remember any of it, but you still remember it somehow, but, like, <laughs> it's floating out there right out of reach. Like, I just had that combined with, like, a weird deja vu feeling, like, not this game, but it made me think of something else, and I was like, Wait, but what was that? And I remember watching it or playing that game or something. And I can't figure out for the life of me what it was. Because like a dream, it slipped away. The nostalgia feeling's still there and that deja vu feeling's there. But I've been having those deja vu feelings like I'm doing something and all of a sudden something will pop into my head like that. And I'm like, I just got a weird deja vu feeling, but it slips away like that dream. I swear to God, am I having a stroke? If you never see this, it's because I had a fucking stroke. I don't know. I've just been very concerned. It could also be because, like, I am, like, my blood sugar is, like, on the fucking floor right now. Because I was like, I can record a part. It'll be fine. And I'm like, oh, my God. No, I can't. I mean, I said this, like, 20 minutes ago. Like, I'm actually kind of hungry. And, like, sometimes I get, like, starving feeling. And other times my blood sugar just, like, crashed. My head hurts. And I feel woozy. And I really think that's part of it. I know someone's gonna don't worry I'm gonna eat after this but I can't like if I stop and then go eat like the thing for me is, is like then I'm like laying on the couch and I'm like hey, well, I don't know like I have a hard time taking breaks when I do things like I said this before in one of the other parts like I manage my, when I'm recording my sin stuff to like do a couple parts and then take a break and go to lunch and then come up because I got like all day but when I'm trying to manage like recording a tome stuff after work it's so much easier like Sometimes I will come home and eat dinner right after work. But I'm also trying to be mindful and like not eat like a fuck ton of calories. And if I eat right after I come home from work, like have a decent sized meal, then later on in the evening I'm hungry and then I'll snack more and that's a problem. So I'm like, don't eat when you come home. Like just watch something on TV or something. Like today I watched a stream, a live stream. So I was like, normally I'd be like, okay, just take a, breather like watch them 10 20 minutes just chillax and then come up and record stuff but i was a little bit behind so like i didn't want to eat while i was watching that because like for some re like i haven't quite reprogrammed my brain to be like i don't know look it's so weird after moving that all the things that you used to do your normal routine is different because it's a different house and everything like so my routine before i moved was like come home either go for a walk if it was nice out because i live on a greenway so I could just like pop outside and go for a walk here eh, I don't know it's also hot as motherfucking balls so fuck that shit but I would come home or then I would eat dinner and then I would record a little bit afterwards so like I would eat dinner while watching the Nian cave because I love the Nian you should watch them if you don't there you go pimping them um and I would watch them while I ate dinner and then after then I would record one or two now I come home and I started doing it too for a while like Sometimes I would come home, record, and then eat. 
But now I'm still trying to like record if I come home and then eat and then record and then I go back down. Then it's like seven o'clock or something and then seven or eight and then I'm hungry and it's like push off eating dinner till later. But I didn't have a lot to eat at lunch. <laughs> so I'm like, I can manage. I'll be fine. And then like just for a minute there, it was like I might fall off my bouncy ball, like just a wave of like, woo. And that's where all that weird shit came from because I just, my blood sugar just tanked for a second. I'm okay right now. It'll be fine. I'll be fine. We got 15 minutes. I'll be fine. Good. I just had to share that because it was the weirdest fucking feeling. I'm like, I think I might have blacked. <laughs> like, what was I even thinking of? What This memory, this thing that popped into my head and I can't remember any freaking second of it. But the whole time it was like so familiar in my brain and I was like, Read, but I was also trying like I was trying to split my brain into like reading and playing the game and thinking about what the fuck is my other half of my brain thinking of? I have no idea, dude. That was just the weirdest fucking moment. But anyway, secret weekend date. That's our next one. Okay, makes sense. It's this one. So, secret weekend date. Tiger springs a date on me, taking me somewhere unexpected. The results are actually really fun. So not the amusement park. Despite Tiger's declaration that he was abandoning his post as observer. Our lives didn't change very much. First and foremost, none of the others knew that Taiga had only come here as an observer and not as a serious suitor. From their point of view, he had been a rival for my affections from the start. There was nothing to gain by making a show of the fact that he'd officially entered the ring. Frankly, everything at the house was so unruffled, Taiga's entry into the fray seemed anticlimactic. For a little while, at least. Huh, um, Taiga? Good. No one's noticed yet. Run like the wind, babe! Well, hey! The sun was shining, the sky was a brilliant blue, the tank is clean! The sun is shining, the birds are chirping. Every time the sun is shining, I just think of being Peach in the tank and finding Nemo. The tank is- <gasps> The tank is clean! Don't tell me you don't do that either. Just like every single time we're playing the game. But I love- Daddy, I love him! And the little mermaid just pops in my- <gasps> starting to occur to me how awfully weird every once in a while Finding Nemo, like, certain Disney animated films just pop into my brain. <laughs> Little Mermaid lives rent-free in the back of my mind forever, because it was my childhood, but, like, also the Finding Nemo thing. Every time the sun was shining, that's the mental image I get. If that is not low blood sugar, that is just my brain being a weird place, but anyway. The sun was shining, the sky was brilliant, and I, completely confused, went running in Taiga's wake as he tugged me along by my arm. My weekend started with what Taiga had called a stealthy tryst. Oh, stealthy tryst. <sighs> Good. This ought to be enough distance. Still alive, babe? What? Will you? <sighs> sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. The guys would just get all up in our business if they found out, you know? Anyway, maybe you should consider conditioning, babe. We didn't run far, but you sound like you're about to die. Quiet! <laughs> you! Jeez, you really are beat. Need a quick break? I don't want to keep moving, but... While he glanced over at the station not too far down the way, I managed to get my breathing under control. Where are you taking me in the first place? Huh? On a date. I already said that. Not that I got any specific place in mind. You didn't plan this at all? Just taking a spur-of-the-moment walk through the city can be pretty fun, though. Yeah, but... We can do some karaoke, maybe some bowling, and... Hey, how do you feel about arcades? Arcades? No! Out of the question! Arcades are breeding grounds for delinquents and punks! Delinquents and punks? Seriously, babe? Why don't you just shake your fist and tell kids to stay off your lawn? I fucking will, goddammit. I just shook his head and rolled his eyes. But then his expression quickly shifted into a mischievous smile. Alright, we're off to an arcade then. What? Did you not just hear me? How can you listen to me say all that, then drag me to an arcade? He went to one with Nayuta. He broke the machine. I don't think about it too much. First things first, we gotta get on the train. Time to move. Ugh. Is he gonna be this pushy all day? Okay, I think there's an arcade somewhere down the street over there. Uh, you aren't gonna take me in there, right? Come on, quit worrying so much, babe. You have the wrong impression about arcades. You'll be perfectly safe. But... 
Come on, don't drag your feet. Walk, walk, walk. Are dates supposed to involve guys barking out orders? I mean, sometimes if they do, that's not a second date chance. That's like, you're like, I'm done here. We finally arrived at the den of depravity. Hesitantly, I stepped through the door and braced myself for... Huh. The inside was bright and stylish. Lights flashed and cheery chimes jangled through the room. People laughed and smiled as they played. Not at all what I imagined. This is more like a small amusement park. Are all arcades bright and clean? Probably not in shady areas, but... See? Nothing dangerous. Yeah. I glanced this way and that, taking in, brand new, taking in the brand new sights. One interesting thing I quickly spotted was a glass case of the pile of stuffed animals inside. I go, what's that? Uh, that's a UFO catcher. See the mechanical arm dangling there in the middle? Moving around to try to grab the prizes inside. The claw. That's not normally one that would pop into my head, but you're welcome, because I'm sure we were all thinking that one. Oh, the stuffed animals are the prizes then. So there's no guarantee you'll be able to win the prize you specifically want? Eh, gotta have skill to be a good fisher. Oh. My eyes had gravitated immediately to a little stuffed animal shoved in a corner. It reminded me of Rabby. I never managed to get that one. Wanna take him home? No, I was simply wondering how the game worked. Uh-huh. Oh well. Playing with a UFO catcher is standard date stuff. Where's the fun in being standard, though? Skee-ball, motherfucker! So, so have you try that game over there first, babe. Pointed over at a machine with a huge screen. It bristled with mysterious levers and buttons. What's that? Real old school fighting game. Best way for you to learn is for me to is for me to throw you right into the arena. Have a seat on that stool there. And this is a slot where you put the money in. Is a hundred good? Oh, oh, oh okay. No, that would be like a dollar. Hundred, yeah, that's different than a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> I sat where Tyga pointed and pulled out my wallet. Oh, I don't have any change on me. That's fine. This is a perfect time to teach you about the money changer. Kind of like the ticket machine at a station. It's a bit different, too. It's over there. See? Put bills into it and it'll spit hundred yen coins back out. Magic. <laughs> I... Okay. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. That sounded simple enough for me to manage. <laughs> it's kind of cute. You're such a shut in. You don't know how that worked. I mean, I get it if you were in like a foreign country or something. You're like, where's the thing? And you don't know how to read. But like, most people know how to put money into a machine and get money out. <laughs> like, like, or an ATM. I put my card in. I get money out. Like, uh, Intent on proving how worldly I become, I stood up and boldly took my wallet in hand. No one, babe. Be super careful you don't hit the self-destruct button. You'll kill us all. I'm not falling for that one again. Again? I know this is like really like we're not close to the end, but I think you'll forgive me with the fact that I am definitely getting loopy and I really need to eat. So I we could do this little section, but I'm worried that this could be like a couple of minutes, but it could also be... 20 minutes you know how sometimes you're doing it and you're like oh it's a cute little two minute three minute five minute segment and then that'd be fine cool we'd be right at time but this will be the one that goes and we're like sitting here like an hour and 30 minutes after like that one other part and i can't do that today i will literally pass out while playing so i'm gonna go and i'm gonna eat and i'm sorry this is slightly shorter but that's okay because we had a super long part a couple parts ago so you'll be fine and I'm sure you'll forgive me because otherwise I might die. <laughs> like, and then we'll never get these uploaded. If this is uploaded, I'm fine. <laughs> but anyway, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.